Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will see what all are the corrections that we need to apply for the basic runway length, right? So why these corrections are to be applied? So if you remember in one of our discussion, we had told that we had done some basic assumptions for the basic runway length. We'll try to see them once. Yeah, so this is how it was, right? So what was, what was the thing? The airport is situated at the sea level. This is the first thing. Then we also told that the standard temperature is maintained along the way and the standard temperature of 15 degrees Celsius exists at the airport. And then we also understood that the runway is leveled in the longitudinal direction or in other words, it has zero effective gradient. So all this, whatever I explained right now, they all are on the paper itself. Practically, it's not possible for you to have a zero effective gradient on the runway. Practically, it is not possible every time the airport is going to have a 15 degree Celsius temperature. And practically, it is not possible the airport will be situated at the sea level only, right? So all these things are practically not possible. Then we need to take care of all these things. That is the reason we try to apply a correction factor for that. So those correction factors we'll try to see from here. Yeah. So as we understood, we have three correction factors. First is correction for the elevation. Then we have correction for the temperature and then we have correction for the gradient. And this has to be corrected in this sequence. First, you have to always try to apply the correction for the elevation followed by the correction for the temperature and then followed by the correction for the gradient. Now coming to the co correction for the elevation. As per the recommendation of the ICO, that is International Civil Aviation Organization, the basic runway length should be increased at a rate of 7% per 300 meter rise in the elevation of an airport above the mean sea level. That's the first thing. This correction is required because the air density reduces as the elevation increases. That means this elevation, what we have, no? I'll write it here. This elevation is, let us say, inversely proportional to the density of the air, right? As the elevation is going to increase, the density of air is going to come down. And if the density of the air is going to come down, then what is going to happen? which in turn reduces the lift on the wings of the aircraft. The aircraft which are going for a takeoff, the lift off, that means on the wings, no, let us say, I'm writing in a very crude way, drawing it in a very crude way. Let us say this is a wings of airport, uh, sorry, wings of a aircraft. So the lift that is required, no, this lift what is required for the aircraft to take off will reduce since we are on a higher elevation. If we, since we are on the higher elevation, what will happen due to this formula, the density of the air is going to come down. If that is going to come down, then this lift will not be more. As a result of that, what is going to happen? Thus, the aircraft will require more ground speed to rise to the air and for, and for achieving more speed, the longer length of the runway is required. That means if, if this is a problem with us, then when I design my runway, let us say, if everything is good, let us say this correction I'm not applying. I'm taking a hypothetical case that there is no elevation. Okay, this is a straight runway. Now what will happen? Your aircraft will come, come, and from here it's going to take off. There's no issue with that. But when you're going to apply the correction for the elevation, then this, this was your length of a runway previously. Let us say this was your length of a runway. And within this length of a runway, you were able to take do this takeoff. Let us say the length of the runway was something 600 meters. Now, due to the change in elevation, this runway length is not possible for me. I need to increase the length. Now from here, I'll try to take this much as my length of my runway now. So now what has happened from here to here, the length of my runway has increased. Since the length of my runway has increased, what can I do? I can increase the speed of my aircraft and the speed can be take, taken up up to these distance. And from here, the takeoff is going to happen, right? So that means this correction factor we need to consider. So that is the reason correction for the elevation is to be applied. The second is correction for the temperature. I've written three here, but always uh, in the textbook, it was written three, but always follow this sequence. Elevation will be applied first, followed by the temperature, followed by the gradient. So I'm going with the temperature with, with that sequence. The rise in the airport reference temperature has the same effect as that of increase in its elevation above the mean sea level. After the basic length is corrected for the elevation, that means first we have to do the correction for the runway length for the elevation. Once that is done, it is further increased at the rate of one degree for every one degree rise in the airport reference temperature. So the airport reference temperature, we are taking 15 degrees Celsius. Let us say if the airport temperature for this particular airport, let us consider is 20 degrees Celsius. So from 15, it has increased by how much? 
from 15 it has increased by 5 degree isn't it so it's telling that you have to apply 1% for every 1 degree here how much percent you have to apply 5% correction you have to apply here huh? 1 degree celsius rise in airport reference temperature above the standard atmospheric temperature at that elevation the airport reference temperature is worked out by the following formula and this formula we need to understand that is airport reference temperature will be t1 plus t2 minus t1 divided by 3 or in some textbook you will find it like t1 plus one third of t2 minus t1 this is what you find in some textbook and in some textbook instead of t1 and t2 they may write ta and tm so it's better you follow this there is no issue with this formula you can take up this formula now what is t1 t1 is a monthly mean of the average daily temperature for a hottest month of the year and t2 is a monthly mean of the maximum daily temperature for the same month so what is this things we'll try to see when we try to solve the problem as of now just understand it's a monthly mean of the average daily temperature for the hottest month of the year and t2 is the monthly mean of the maximum daily temperature for the same month so the standard temperature at the airport side can be determined by reducing the standard mean sea level temperature of 15 degrees celsius at a rate of 6.5 degrees celsius per thousand meter rise in the elevation right so the a note is given the icao that is international council for international civil aviation organization recommends that the total correction for the elevation plus the temperature whatever correction we are going to apply no it should not exceed 35 percent of the basic runway length right and the specific studies at the site by model test could be carried out fi before finally adopting the runway length so if that increases then what will happen we need to carry out this model test so this is also another point given by the ICAO so when we try to apply the problems we'll try to see the applications of this the next is a correction for the gradient so as a gradient becomes steep more consumption of energy takes place and longer length of the runway will be required to attain the desired ground speed that means if the runway is in this way if this is my runway i don't have issue but if the runway is becomes very steep and all right if becomes very steep and all the runway then what will happen it require it will consume more energy to take place and longer length of the run will be required to attain the desired speed the icao does not give any specific recommendation for the increase in the length due to the effective gradient so this icao will not is not going to give us any recommendation for the correction to be applied for the gradient but the maximum difference in the elevation between the highest and the lowest point of a runway is divided by the total length of a runway it is called as a effective gradient so we already seen in the previous lecture so what is effective gradient if this is my runway if this this will be my highest point and this will be my lowest point so this highest point minus this lowest point divided by the basic runway length is going to give me the effective gradient but according to f double a that is federal aviation administration of united states of america the runway length after being corrected for the elevation and temperature should further be increased at a rate of 20% for every 1% of the effective gradient for every 1% change in the effective gradient okay with this formula what we are going to do that is uh, top rl minus lowest rl divided by the basic runway length whatever you are going to get no 20% for every 1% of the effective gradient you have to increase so this is what that uh, f double a is going to tell us so these are the few uh, corrections that we are supposed to ap apply now we'll get into the problematic part and we'll try to see how it has to be solved so just uh, concentrate on those things which i'm trying to explain so this is a question what is given calculate the actual length of a runway from the following data right so he's telling us the airport elevation that is rl reduced level is 100 meter airport reference temperature is 28 degrees celsius that is a temperature of the airport at that particular location basic length of a runway is given as 600 meter highest point along the length is 98.2 and the lowest point along the length is 95.2 right yeah so first what we need to do we need to put the correction for the elevation and we have understood the basic length is to be increased this length what you have now the basic length of runway 600 meter airport elevation is from the rl it is about 100 meter so since it is at a higher level we have to apply the correction factor there so the basic length is to be increased at the rate of 7 percent per 300 meter elevation above the mean sea level so the correction for the elevation will be try to apply this 
seven percent, right? So seven divided by hundred into what is the airport elevation given? It is given as hundred. So write this hundred here and divide it by three hundred because it is seven percent per three hundred meter elevation above the mean sea level. So this is the formula we need to follow. Seven percent. So seven divided by hundred. Or even you can do this as seven divided by hundred comes out to be zero point zero seven. Then divide it by three hundred, and then you multiply this by hundred. That is the airport elevation given. Just in case if the airport elevation given as four hundred, then you should have multiplied this by four hundred, right? So in this way you have to carry out. So try to do this. You are going to get an answer of fourteen meter. Now. This is the correction factor we applied. Where this correction factor will be applied for the basic length of a runway, right? Because why this? Because since the elevation was increased, it was see. Let us say initially this was the basic runway length what we had got. Let us say 600 meter. But this elevation, this runway was at height of 100 meter from the mean sea level. So what will happen? Since the elevation is more, we know that the air is going to come down. If air is going to come down, then the lift required for these wings will be less. So as a result of that. My aircraft has to travel a bit longer distance to gain that much amount of lift. So, how much extra it has to go? That we did by telling that it has to go for another 14 meter. So, instead of 600, provide another 14 meter extra runway. So, my basic runway will be total 600 plus 14 comes out to be 614 meter. Now, if I provide a runway of 614 meter, then my aircraft can Take off from here without any problem, and whatever lift is to be supposed to be generated on the wings, that will be generated due to this height in the elevation. Next is correction for the temperature. So we know that the standard atmospheric temperature at the mean sea level is 15 degrees Celsius. Even in the assumptions we had seen this. Now, taking the temperature gradient as equal to 6.5 degrees Celsius per 100,000 meter rise in the elevation. The standard temperature at the airport site will be. From where we got this, we had seen in the theory part. If I go back to the theory part, it is written here. By reducing the standard mean level temperature of 15 degrees Celsius at the rate at the rate of 6.5 degrees Celsius per thousand meter rise in the elevation. So that's the same thing we have written it here. So it's a 6.5 degree. Celsius. So the temperature at RL of 100 meter will be. What is the airport reference temperature? It is 15 degree. 15 minus take it as 6.5 into 100 divided by 1000. So because this is 6.5 degree percentage per 1000 meter. So 6.5 divided by 1000 into 100 is what I have done. It comes out to be 14.35 degree Celsius. Now. Difference between the airport reference temperature and the standard atmospheric temperatures will be how much, which will come out to be the airport reference temperature. What actually they are getting at the airport, right? This is twenty-eight degrees Celsius. So I have taken twenty-eight minus whatever calculation we have got. It comes out to be fourteen point three five degrees Celsius, right? Now twenty-eight minus fourteen point three five comes out to be thirteen point six five degrees Celsius. Now. Applying a correction at the rate of one degree for every one degree Celsius. That means again, if I go back, it's given here. After the basic length is corrected for the elevation of the airport, it is further increased at the rate of one degree for every one degree rise in the airport reference temperature. So with this logic. Applying correction at the rate of one degree for every one degree Celsius, one percentage for every one degree Celsius. Correction for the temperature will be one divided by hundred into what is the basic runway length we got after the correction? Six hundred fourteen meter. So six hundred fourteen into one divided by hundred into what is the difference between the airport reference temperature and standard atmospheric temperature? This is thirteen point six five degrees Celsius. What we got? Try to multiply this by thirteen point six five. If you do that, you are going to get eighty-three point eight one, which comes out to be eighty-four meter. Again, this is a corrected runway length after the temperature. Therefore, the corrected runway length will be six hundred fourteen. This we got after applying a correction for the elevation. Now, after applying the correction for the temperature, six hundred fourteen plus eighty-four comes out to be six ninety-eight meter. Right. So, two corrections we have applied. Next is correction for the gradient. So, correction for the gradient. So here we have to find the effective gradient, right? The effective gradient will be RL is given. 
highest point RL is given, lowest point RL is given, divided by the basic runway length. So what is the RL? RL 98.2, this is 98.2 minus RL 95.2, you divide it by 600. So this time you shouldn't take this corrected runway length. Here the formula itself is basic runway length. The basic runway length is 600. So I'm dividing it by 600. Just in case if it was given 800 here, I would have written 800 here. So three divided by 600 comes out to be 0.5% is the effective gradient. Now applying a correction for the effective gradient at a rate of 20% for each 1% effective gradient. Here we're getting 0.5, but the correction is to be 20% for each 1% effective gradient. Therefore, correction for the gradient will be equal to 20 divided by 100, since it is in percentage, 20 divided by 100 into 698 is what you are supposed to do. 698 is a corrected runway length. All this correction factor you have to apply for the corrected runway length. So here the previous corrected runway length is 698. So I'm applying it as 698 into 0.5 by 1. Because what is what is given here? Effective gradient, what we are getting is 0.5, right? So that is the reason 0.5. I have done it here. So if you try to do this correction, it comes out to be 69.8. So we are taking it on the higher side, let us say 70 meter. So this again 70 meter additional length you have to provide for the corrected runway length. Therefore, actual length of the runway will be 698 we got from here plus 70 plus 70 you add to that comes out to be 768 meter. Therefore, this much length I would need to provide. Initially, it was 600, right? Before solving the problem, we got the answer is 600. Now applying all this correction factor from 600, the length of my runway should be 768 meter so that whatever error we have done, that is the error for elevation, error for the temperature and error for the gradient is taken into account and will, my aircraft will not have any problem and it can do the takeoff from here. Yeah. Now, this is one check that you need to do. The total correction for the elevation and temperature what we have done, the total correction for the elevation, the first one and the temperature what we have done. If you try to add both, that is here we got 14 meter correction for the elevation and correction for the temperature we had got 84 meter. So if you try to add them, it comes out to be 98 meter. Therefore, the percentage increase you have to find. You should find the percentage increase. So 98 divided by divided by basic runway length into 100. Since it is in percentage, 98 divided by 600 into 100 comes out to be 63.33%. And according to ICAO, this should not be more than 35%. Right. So if I go back again. Yeah, the ICAO recommends that if the total correction for the elevation plus temperature exceeds 35% of the basic runway length, the specific studies at the site by model test should be carried out before finally adopting the runway length. That means now we have found it that this length what we are providing the percentage increase is less than 35% and we can go ahead with this calculation. Just in case we were getting 36 or 37 percent, then we have to conduct this model test on the site itself so that we get a better understanding what exactly runway length we need to carry out. For this, those agencies or those people will come to the site and they will carry out this uh, site model test, like the wind test and all, how it has to be applied and all those things will be carried out by those people for the temperature, for the elevation and for the effective gradient. Yeah. So I hope uh, you have got an idea how to solve this problem. In the next lecture, we'll try to take up another two problems and we'll see how those problems have to be solved. So we'll see you back in the next lecture. Thank you.